Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to part two of your reading lesson today. Before we get started, uh, now that we're finished with the book, I'm going to just review a quick little important things about theme that we need to consider before we pick a theme of a story. The first one is that theme is not stated in the story. Usually, it's very rare if an author states it. Usually, we have to determine a theme, this leads us into number two, based on the character's actions or thoughts and the events that take place in the story. So we have to travel back from the beginning, through the middle and through the end to determine where that actual theme is prevalent and it needs to be consistent throughout the whole entire story. Number three, theme can be found by making inferences. When we're making a theme of a story, we are inferring, we're using evidence from the text to make those inferences, those inferences to make those theme statements. So we have to use the evidence that shows us in the text what we're learning, what is the moral, what is the message, what are those lessons that we're learning from our characters and the events that take place. And then we need to avoid confusing themes with a main idea of the story because a theme is what we learn. It's the moral or message of the story based on the character's actions, their feelings, and their events they show us. Um, it's not just a subject or a main idea. You're gonna find that main idea goes more with nonfiction reading. And then number five, stories can have more than one theme. And in your Flipgrids, Chloe mentioned three different themes that were very prevalent in Night of the Spadefoot Toads. And as long as you can prove it with evidence, and it's consistent throughout the story from the beginning, middle, and end, we can have more than one theme. And I might pick a theme that's similar to yours that you mentioned on your Flipgrid, but I might state it a little differently. I know I stated in the first video that I'm going to show you how to state a theme and prove it with evidence, but I am going to only show you today based on time, because I don't want you sitting here in front of the video too long, knowing that my first video was about 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and show you the paper that we're going to use for practicing theme because next week you're going to be doing this with a text called shells. You're going to be reading it and you're going to be pulling out the theme, which is the moral message or lesson, and then you're going to be proving it, proving it with evidence from the text. So I'm going to model part of that, what that looks like today, and then on Monday and Tuesday, you're going to get the last part of the modeling. So our video will be a little bit shorter than I stated before. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And now we have our theme paper in front of us. So next week when you read shells and we do some work with shells together, you are going to be proving the theme on this paper. It'll be updated and uploaded um, electronically. And then you're also going to be then writing evidence one, evidence two, evidence three in your stories. So that prove the theme that you select, just like we're going to do with Night of the Spadefoot Toads. So when you complete this assignment next week, um, after we're reading the story Shells, you're going to go ahead and first thing you're going to do is put your name on the paper. So if I'm modeling, I'm going to put Miss Pierce. And then I'm going to put the title of my book, which is called The Night of the Spadefoot Toads. Remember, the title of a book is a proper noun. So if it's words that are more than three letters, we need to make sure we capitalize them. So I'm going to put night of the spade foot totes. And then I'm going to go ahead and write down one of the themes that I think is really evident in the story from the beginning, the middle, and the end that Ben taught me. And it's a message to me as a reader that I can remember and keep in my pocket as I walk through life. So the theme that I selected was very similar to some of yours. Um, and I think I can really prove this with, with great evidence from the text, which I will be modeling next week. So it says change can be good. So I'm going to first write change can be hard. Comma. But with time, 
but with time, you may learn to love it. There are a couple different ways I could have stated this, but I chose change can be hard because for Ben, change was really hard throughout the majority of the book. But with time, you may learn to love it. And he showed that he gave it time and he learned little by little. He had friends here. He loved the biome, the environments here. He had this great science teacher that had the same love for him that made him love it here. But he also showed us that change is hard and we don't always like to make it. What I would do next on this activity that you'll be practicing next week independently is then I would choose a piece of evidence from the beginning of the book, the middle of the book, and the end of the book. So I'm gonna go ahead and write uh, beginning. Beginning piece of evidence. The middle piece of evidence that I'll need from something that, an event that happened with the characters and some evidence at the end of the story to prove my theme that I chose, which is change can be hard, but with time, you may learn to love it. On Monday next week, I am going to come back to the screen and I am going, you're going to see part two of this lesson, and I'm going to model the three pieces of evidence that I'm going to pull from the book at the beginning, middle, and end to prove my theme of Night of the Spadefoot Toads. And then next week, you're going to be reading on Read It Lies Reader, a very short story called Shells. And you're going to be also doing the same activity on the same paper with your short text. So I can have an idea if you're gathering theme and you're understanding how to choose a theme and proving it with really good evidence from the text. So I'm going to stop there today and we'll pick up on this lesson on Monday. All right, we finished the book. Super proud of you. Now you're going to go ahead and read today independently and I want you to read a fiction book. Make sure while you're reading, you're following the characters and their actions, their thoughts, their feelings. And you're thinking about lessons and morals and messages that your characters are showing you, potential themes in your stories. Bye for now. Talk to you all soon.